illustrations by Pete. Hello everybody. Thank you for clicking on the video today. Today we're going to be doing just a straight up watercolor uh, in a cold press etcher sketchbook. I really like the texture of this paper. It's typically I usually make my own sketchbooks, but the etcher series, their actual etcher series, um, not the perfect sketchbook, but the etcher sketchbooks. I really enjoy and um, I put some tape on there to give it a nice border. I'm only going to use a few of these buck, uh, brushes here. I, I will use those are those simply Simmons, those, that white barrel. That is a very cheap brush, but I really like the sword brush. And I'll use that filbert right there. Um, and then I will use that, which is a Da Vinci Cosmotop spin. I'm going to go ahead and start that, soak everything down, and just do a regular watercolor painting. The, the, um, there's a little technique that I'm going to use in here for the mountain section, which will be over on the bottom left side of that. And typically what I do is I uh, put uh, layers of colors down and then strip them away and you can see all the colors underneath. This is really good paper to lift with. It lifts very, very well. So uh, you'll see that later on. So today I'm going to take you on a little journey through my mind. And I'm really doing this to see if there's anybody else who has this same exact experience. Um, the other day I turned around and I said to my wife, Hey, do you remember when we were visiting back on Long Island and we went to Port Jeff and we were watching the sun go down? So that was the statement to her. But the way that I got there was very strange. So let me walk you through this. And this often happens to me. I'll just be, if I blurt something out in the middle of nowhere, this is how I got there. It's very strange. So I started off, I was just a little hungry and I was thinking about what I wanted to eat. And I thought of pizza and I thought, well, I like pizza. Who doesn't like pizza? Well, some people don't like pizza. I like pizza. So that took me then to another part of my life where I was in school and I knew someone who um, their family owned a pizza shop and that place was pretty good, which took me to when a friend of mine was working at a pizza shop. He used to deliver pizza with no shoes on. It's pretty funny. When me and my wife first got married, we were in our first apartment and he was delivering just a few hours down from us and also was delivering to us. And he was walking to their door and he dropped their salad on the floor and he picked it up and they answered the door and he said, um, are you going to eat that? And of course they said no. So he picked up the salad and took it back to my house, which is a couple doors down, delivered our pizza and sat down and ate with us which made me remember what he was driving during that time period. Now, he drove a small S10 with a cab on it. I think it was an S10. It was the size of an S10. I don't know if it was. Uh, with, and it had a little cab, and it had really bald tires. And you could hear him coming. If he turned the wheel just a little bit, the tires would squeal. It was hysterical. And um, it had a cab on it, like a hatch-like covering for the back of the bed. And um, I was thinking, boy, it must be hard to look out the, the back of that thing because that thing was, it was a little dirty and the windows were not very clean or they could have been scratched out. It was a second hand, so I don't know how it was, but I thought that was pretty dirty. So that reminded me of how much anxiety I have when I need to back out of somewhere and I can't really see. Uh, it was very crowded and there's people walking all around you, you're trying to get out of a spot. So I thought, you know, that must be hard to see out of. I couldn't imagine trying to back that up, which then reminded me of my wife's first car when we, well, it wasn't her first car. It was the first car that she had while we were married. And it was a Camaro. It was a 1987 IROC Camaro. And that thing, you almost sat on the floor when you got in. And for someone short like me, that was definitely hard to see around and behind you and see how to get out of somewhere. And the memory that I have of that car is 
when I was taking my senior trip, it was my senior trip, it was not a part of the school or anything like that. Um, it was myself, my wife, and two of our friends, and we took a trip to Connecticut. We took the ferry over, and as we're driving onto the ferry, her muffler caught because that thing sits on the ground. And I remember the muffler fell off. I had to rig it up with a coat hanger up through the window to hold it up as we got off the ferry to, so that we could just get off and move. I realized that just sounded strange. Um, my wife and I were dating while I was a senior in high school. Um, she was not my wife at that point, just to clarify. So now that brings me to why I was thinking about Port Jeff is because we took the ferry from that point. And when I think about Port Jeff, the last memory that I have of that was uh, me and my wife were living in Pennsylvania. We took a trip to New York, to Port Jeff, and we were watching the sun go down. And that's how I got there. That is how my mind works. Now, if your brain was a series of roads and you would say that the direct route is the toll road, it's the turnpike, it goes straight from point A to point B, my mind is set by default to avoid all toll roads. It's, my mind always takes the scenic route, is what I'm trying to say. I, I go through these weird string of thoughts to get to where I end up, and sometimes I'll just be zoned out and just blurt something like that out. Here's what I really wanna know. Does this happen to anybody else? I hope so. I hope this is a normal thing. Does everyone do that? Do I just do that? I think that's, um, I'm hoping that that's a normal thing. I don't know if it is, but let me know. Okay, so in uh, just a second here, what I'm gonna do is mix up a even darker color to put on top of those mountains to the left, or rocks, really they're just rocks to the left. They're coming up out of the side of that hill. So um, you'll see that I'm mixing a dark purple color to lay on top and you might say this is watercolor why would you mix another color to put on top of that um, for any reason as you're just mixing mud you're basically mixing mud but that's not what I'm doing I'm adding another layer of color and you'll see why in just a second I'm gonna start removing those colors now be careful when you do this don't rub the paper you're just blotting the paper to get the color out of it to get the paint off of it okay so since we're talking about watercolor, why are watercolor kits getting smaller? You ever notice it's, it doesn't matter how small or compact of a travel kit or travel set you have, someone comes out with something smaller. Um, there's, you see these little kits, they look like little, a bit the size of a business card and they flip it open and there's just a couple of very shallow, I guess they're makeup tins, I don't even know, but they're little shallow tins. That's what it reminds me of. When I look at my wife's makeup, that's what it looks like. And they, they stick them in there, put a little magnetic strip on the back and they stick them in there. I'm not knocking anybody who does this. I just want to know, why do we keep getting smaller? Is it? Do you need to hold a palette the size of a business card because you're walking around with it in your pocket? Do you not go anywhere with a, can you not put it in a bag? If you're a woman, do you, do you have a purse you're putting it in? If you're a guy, is there not like a little shoulder pack you can put it in? Or are you going somewhere knowing that you're going to paint? Or maybe you don't know you're going to paint. Maybe you just go somewhere and when the mood hits you, you pull out this little thing out of your pocket. But, you know, you don't want to leave watercolor in your pocket, right? Is that, that's kind of weird. What if it opens up? And now you just ruined your clothes because you, you stick your hand in there and maybe your hand was, I, I don't know, maybe you're just holding a cold drink. You put your hand in there and the thing's open and you rub it and then it gets all over the inside of your pants. Do, is that how you're doing it? Are you putting that in your pocket? Do you need to put it um, somewhere sm that small? Or can you handle, you know, even a small, they make some pretty small sketchbooks now. They have a one that opens like a three and a half by five and a half or something that opens up and you then have about a five and a half and by seven or something like that. It, they're, they're pretty small now, so that's not a big deal. I understand maybe you're just gonna do something small and um, the, the sketchbook here that I'm using is only an eight by five or roundabout, 
I'm sure there's it's like eight and by five and a half or something like that. But it's about what it is. And that kit that's next to it, that's a big kit. That's a big watercolor kit. It is a travel kit, but it's still big. And um, so I understand if you don't want to go with something like that, but they make some that are about the size of a cell phone or, you know, around there that you just flip open, you have a decent size to mix in. And I just don't understand. Everything's always getting smaller. Everybody's always going smaller and smaller. But to me, that kind of defeats the functionality of it. I don't know if I could paint with something that small. And then they have these little two by three um, watercolor pads that they paint on. I, I, I don't know. It just confuses me. I don't get it. For me, um, if I'm going to go somewhere and, and be ready to paint for whatever reason, I have a little smaller kit that I travel with, but it's just not that small. It's it's not business card size. I don't put it in my pocket. I usually will have a shoulder bag or a backpack or something like that that I put it in. Or even a, if, you, if you walk around with a briefcase, that you keep it in there, whatever. But um, it, it's just strange to me. And that brings up another thought. Do, do you all draw with pencils in your sketchbooks? Because I have a problem that I love drawing with pencil, but I can't do it in a sketchbook. Well, I have a love-hate relationship with pencil. I love drawing with pencil because I love the, the gradient and the shading that you can get. It, it's very nice. But at the same time, I don't like that, that graphite sheen, that sparkle, which is why if I use the graphite pencils or something, you water that down. And even the Derwent uh, wash pencils, the graphite wash pencils, you can... Um, water them down it gets rid of that sheen but it still looks like pencil it still get that soft uh, flowing gradient which is very nice with pencil i really like that but when you put it in a sketchbook every other page it touches it ruins and i don't you gotta put um you can put glassine sheets over it or you can do whatever but i tend not to do it. you spray it with fixative which i'm not going to do while i'm just standing you know you're sitting in your office or sitting at home on the couch you're not gonna like whip that out and start spraying stuff so i just by the time you get somewhere, it's smudged, is what I'm saying. You, you're, it's smudged somewhere. But anyway, I don't know if you do that, but I, I don't like doing that. I have a hard time with that. But, well, let me know. Let me know how you handle that situation, because I love pencil. I don't like using it in my sketchbooks. But, um, all right, well, this is almost over. It's just about done. And, um... Again, the, I do a lot of that blotting technique that I'm doing right there. I do a lot of where you put some color down, blot it out, and it just blends it a little bit. And sometimes I go over it with a glaze. Uh, you saw that earlier. And um, I put a, that was my tribute to Bob Ross there on the right. There's a little tree that I put there, but, but it doesn't have any leaves on it. I don't know if it's happy. I don't know if it's a happy little tree, but it's, it's a little tree. And then I wanted to put some flowers in there because, you know, they're, they're happy little flowers. And that's where they live. So anyway, I really hope you enjoyed this. Um, it was fun for me. I like doing just straight watercolor sometimes. And uh, I love that peeling that off is just a, a satisfying thing. And then you have that nice border. The, the tape I was using for that is actually the uh, Scotch tape, low tack artist tape. And it's really good. It never sticks to the paper, no matter what. And it works well. The paint doesn't really get under there. So if you want to use it, go ahead and do that. Well, thank you all for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day, or whatever time it is. And I'll talk to you soon. Okay, bye.